Okay, so this video is a look at some general influences and other bits and bobs from the 60s Batman TV show. So I've recently been through the entire 60s Batman TV show box set and did a series of videos pointing out various images and ideas from it which popped up in other Batman and related projects. So here are a few general ones which didn't make it into those videos. 89 Batman sees the Joker use harmful coloured gas on a number of occasions, which has to be based on the 60s TV show as they use coloured gas a lot, usually as a knockout gas. Batman Forever is littered with obvious nods to the 60s TV show. First is the shot of the Batmobile driving up the side of the building, like Adam West and Burt Ward doing their back climb on nearly every episode. Then there's Bruce Wayne sliding down the fire escape to change into Batman at the bottom, a makeshift bat pole if ever I've seen one. Robin's holy rusted metal Batman exclamation, challenging Burt Ward there, and Batman and Robin running towards the camera at the end, which I think is based on the 60s TV show's animated opening titles, which has Batman and Robin running towards the camera. And I'll end with a hopeful funny one. In Batman Forever and Batman and Robin, they started to include nipples on the Batsuit, which I think is a dig at Adam West, as his nipples were very often showing through on his Batsuit. Should have worn a Bat Vest. Next are just a few of the bits and bobs I noticed while going through them all. One of the things I noticed was that four actors from the original Planet of the Apes films were also in Batman. Roddy McDowell, Linda Harrison, Victor Buono and Maurice Evans. It's no surprise really as both were owned by 20th Century Fox and the actors were probably under contract to appear in their productions. It's still there though. I bet you're wondering which villain was in Batman the most. Well I've got the stats here. In 10th place are various villains with just one appearance, such as Siren. In 9th place it's Lord Marmaduke Fogg with three. Eighth is Mad Hatter and Shame with four apiece. Seventh is Marsha Queen of Diamonds and Egghead with five. Sixth place is Mr. Freeze with six. Fifth is King Tut with eight appearances. Fourth is Riddler with eleven. Third is Catwoman with fourteen. Second is Joker with 18, which leaves Penguin as the most used villain with 20. Burgess Meredith did nail it though. The ratings for season 1 were outstanding, but declined in season 2, and tailed off so badly in season 3 that it was the final one. After watching them all back to back over a period of months, I think I know why. They used better villains in season 1. Apart from the top four of Joker, Penguin, Catwoman and Riddler, its one-shot villains such as Zelda, False Face and Butworm were just so much better than Season 2 and 3's one-shot villains, such as Archer, Minstrel, Clock King, Puzzler and Louis the Lilac. Don't get me wrong, I enjoyed these episodes, but they just weren't as strong as some from Season 1. Maybe they should have reused some of these characters. Who knows, it might have lasted a few more seasons. We'll never know. Okay, so that was a look at some general influences and other bits and bobs from the 60s Batman TV show, and hopefully you'll join me on another video sometime.